when you're using a BDC turret or a bullet drop compensating reticle, they're designed to match a specific ballistic coefficient and air density. Now, when you're out in the field shooting, sometimes you have to make some compensations, whether it's for incline or in this case for air density. Now, air density is made up of two components. We're gonna talk about air temperature and air pressure. For me, I have a better frame of reference if I convert that pressure into an equivalent altitude. So temperature and altitude. We can use a device just like this little uh, handheld wind meter we have. Uh, it's gonna tell me my altitude in feet, and that's based on pressure, and it's gonna tell me my temperature in degrees. So it's a very simple thing when you're on the mountain to measure your altitude and temperature. You can use a handheld uh, like this, or you can use a watch. A measuring device will take care of it for you. Uh, the next step is to compensate for that uh, air density change. What we're talking about is if my turret is built for, let's say, 5,000 feet and 50 degrees, and I'm up here on the mountain and I've got some other elevation and some other temperature, I've got a situation where I may need to compensate for that difference. But maybe I don't need to compensate if the change isn't big enough to cause a significant point of impact shift on our target. So there's a couple tools that we can use. Uh, let's start with the most advanced. Right off the bat, we've got the new G7 rangefinder. This device allows us to program our exact ballistics in from our turret or our reticle into the device. The device measures line of sight range, incline, and it also samples your air pressure and your temperature. And it makes a ballistic computation and outputs your corrected range. It's very simple. But usually when you have sophisticated devices that are more simple, you spend more money. If we step down uh, one notch in the, uh, the cost factor, uh, a small little handheld device like this, uh, this is an HP using Windows Mobile 6 and it's got the new G7 program. Uh, we can program our turret into this device and then enter our atmospherics and it will tell us what our corrections are for our different ranges. Uh, it's got a shoot to range calculation or just a simple chart output. So first and most sophisticated is a rangefinder that encompasses everything. Uh, you can add a handheld like this to your existing uh, gear, your, your wind meter, your GPS, your rangefinder. This is just one more device that you have to carry in the field. Now, what I like to do in the field is apply a simple rule of thumb that allows me to skip the extra devices and just make a click correction depending on our conditions. I'm going to go to g7.com, I'm going to program my ballistic turret parameters into the, the free online program, so 617 BC, 3025 muzzle velocity. We're going to look at a spread of elevation and a spread of temperature, so 0 to 10,000 feet, 0 to 100 degrees temperature. We'll start with 0 temperature, 0 feet elevation, we'll go to 10,000 feet for a second chart, and we'll find that for every 500 feet we have about one click or one quarter minute of angle of correction. So every thousand feet of elevation change is two clicks. Now if we go back and look at the temperature from zero to 100 uh, degrees temperature, we'll find that every 20 degrees is worth about two clicks at a thousand yards. And if we further explore that, we'll find that at 750 yards, it's less, in this case about a click, and at 500 yards, it's essentially nothing. That means that when I'm in a hunting situation, I'm up on the mountain, if my shot is in that 500 yard range, I don't have to make any corrections for air density. But if it's out to 750 yards, I need to add up or subtract one click for every 1,000 feet of elevation change or 20 degrees of temperature change. Now that's a pretty simple thing for me to keep track of. I can do it without writing it on a chart. If you go to g7.com and program your values for your cartridge into the program, do your little math exercise, then you'll be able to make a simple compensation for air density the next time you're in the field. I'm Aaron Davidson. Join us again for more shooting tips here at Long Range Pursuit.